Yes. Shalom. Shalom Chavarim. Yes, I. Shalom Chavarim. This is Ras Ayadonis, the Farai LOJ Society, the Line of Judah Society, LOJS dot O R G. Rastafari Jews can hit I and I up at the email. So here, 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 first things first, right here, here, here. Check out our website, LOJS.org. Also the the live streams at Rastafari Israelites on the YouTubes. Rastafari Israelites. Also some some new presentation and venues coming forward. Also looking forward to the Rastafari TV support check it out if you haven't checked it out but definitely support rastafari tv as well but here 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 i want to speak on some kjv king james version mistranslations right mistranslations that really cause some really crazy and silly debates you know certain debates that go on you know i was going to call it comedic um, mistranslations that should be a category as well but here this is one my mistranslation right here and this is regarding the quote borrow was it borrow or ask did the israelites borrow or ask right the translator kjv let's bring this up right here the translator right here says right when we go to the scripts right here we look up borrow in the scripture and we have 13 right king james version old and new testament basic 66 book search right here with the concordance we have the concordance the strong concordance often we check out and use the bdb as well right always good to have another kind of concordance so you know we can weigh you know the different results that we get but here's the verse right here and now we was reminded of this based on the midrash the study from the safer midrash um to lean on Psalm 114, which is the Exodus Psalm. And there was a section right in here where we're speaking about when Yisrael, when Israel came forth, Mimitzrayim. And then there was this comment right here um, speaking about there were four, four reasons, right? There's four reasons why the B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel, were redeemed, were redeemed from the Het Kapita, Egypta, or Gibbets, Egypt, Mitzrayi, Kemen, if you please. The four reasons basically, they did not change their names. The Shemot, which is the Hebrew name of the second book of the Pentateuch, the five books, five volumes of Moshe, the Torah, right? The second book called Exodus. In the Hebrew, Hebraically, Judaically, we call it Shemot. So the four reasons why the B'nai Yisrael were redeemed were purchased back, bought back, one, they did not change their names. Shemot, Shemot, the names. They didn't change their names. They did not change their language. They did not reveal their secrets. And they were not wanty, wanty. They were not wanton, wanton. All right, so here, and bringing this down right here, um, where it says they did not reveal their secrets as, as an example right here of what one Rab, Rab Eliazar Ha'kapar had taught the four reasons why the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, were redeemed from Mitzrayim, from Egypt. And getting to the third, this is the third of the four reasons, right, that they did not reveal their secrets. You will find that a divine command was committed to their keeping for 12 months. Elohim said, Every woman shall ask of her neighbor, dot, 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 nikodot, 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 right? Jewels of silver, etc. Now here the quote is Exodus chapter 3, verse 22. And there was not one among them who disclosed the divine, the divine command. So here we turn to the KJV, King James Version of the Bible. Structurally, in our studies, the KJV is, is one of the only English versions that we can really do what, what you see us doing here, you know, with the Strong's Concordance, right, going through the key words, the key phrases, the other um, trans, so-called translations, trans interpolations, they're like a, a part translation, part interpolation. Now, the King James Version 
is not perfect. Let's just point it out. And we are not a bibliolator. We're not bibliolators. There's a lot of bibliolators. It's like basically an idolater regarding the Bible. Bibliolators. You know, like the King James. You heard people say, oh, King James Version is better than the Hebrew. I'm like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> is it better than the Greek too? But they always want to, you know, put something that's better than the Hebrew, right? But here, 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 here getting to the Masaratawi Kwankwa as the king of kings, the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, the root of David, as Kermal Hasselasi says, the, the foundational right, language, the Ibraist, right, Ibraist Kwankwa, Bamarenya, speaking of the Ibrit, right, the, the Hebrew. Here it says, but every woman shall borrow. Now, what I just read from the Sefer Midrash uh, Tehillim, Right, the um, the book on the study, right, the study of the Psalms from some of the ancient sages, ancient scholars of Torah, going through the the Psalms, right, and bringing out, highlighting, you know, some nuances that it's impossible to really see it from the English, from the English, and also as we compare and contrast translations, for example, here, this is a big one here. So we still hear ones and ones on these faux, these faux and pseudo arguments and debates. Where ones want to debate, you know, whether the Hebrew narrative is really true, and they start out with the King James or the English version of the Bible. Come on now, come on now, you know what I mean? This is a good example right here, right? And hopefully we'll do like a vlog, you know, on a couple of other points. Well, there's many other points like this. And though it might seem like a minor point, it's major when, you know, you think about it. Because someone will say, well, the Israelites, they borrowed. When did they pay it back? They borrowed, but they never paid it back. Right? They borrowed. Look at that. They borrowed from, from the Egyptians. They borrowed from the Kemetics. They borrowed from the Kemites, but they didn't pay it back. And we've already heard some latter-day ones and ones, you know, some black-faced comedics, you know, already make that particular argument right there, there, there. And even some of the Hebrews, the black Hebrews and the Hebrew Israelite ones and ones, most of them, many of them are not doing their due diligence either, right? Because they're getting caught up on some of the camps have a little bit of bibliolating going on. Oh, King James, and King James was a black man. Well, even, even so, even so. That's not saying that his version, the King James Version, is of equal standing with the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. With the Masoretic and with the, the Hebrew Scriptures. Masoretic, you look at the Masoretic, you can look at the, the Sephardic, you know, the Samaritan as well. You know, and the thing that you will find is that with the addition even of the pointing, it still is right and accurate. So let's go right here, here, here. And as we said, the KJV is one of the only versions that we can actually study the English alongside the Hebrew. Even if we are not fluent in the Hebrew, it still gives us the key words, as you can see right here from this exhibit right here with Exodus chapter 3, verse 22. But every woman, right, every woman, it's the H802. The word for woman is Isha, Isha. And then we have in the plural sense of Nashin, woman. So the Isha, the Isha is woman. Right? Contextually speaking, it can be woman, wife, right? It's not really female. The word for female is nekeba, as when Elohim created man, said, Let us make man in our image of thy likeness. Let us make man uh, uh, zakar, u nekeba. Zakar is male, and female is nekeba, right? So it's not really female in that sense, that sense. We have a word for female, like male and female, zakar u nekeba. And then we have man and woman in the higher sense, ish. We have the ish and the isha. The ish and the isha, right? So just to show how this goes, right? And you see what it says, shall borrow, shall borrow. That's the H7592. Now, in the Sefer Midrash, you know, you know, Sefer... Midrash, the Midrash on the Psalm, on the Tehillim, right? We have here, it translated, the part of the verse translated as every woman shall ask of her neighbor, up to the comma. But here it says, every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. Now, borrowing and asking, right? 
is two different things. If I ask you something for something, is different than I borrow because borrowing, as we know the word in English, right? Borrowing, need, need we go look up the etymology of the word borrow? It'd be interesting to see what it says anyway. But borrow is different right, than ask, simple put. Now, if this has said what the Hebrew says, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor, it'd be totally different, right? But that's not the only verse right there, Exodus 3.22. We have Exodus 11 and 2. It says, Speak now in the ears of Ha'am, of the people, and let every man. So the man is also commanded. It's not just the woman. The woman first in Exodus 3.22. Here we go forward to Exodus 11 and 2. It says, Speak now. Right? So as he spoke before to the woman, now speak now in the ears of Ha'am, of Amo, Yisrael, the people of Yisrael, Amo. Right? And let every man... Right? Let every ish, you see ish, just want to bring that up right there, ish. It's not ish, not ish. Proper pronunciation of the Hebrew is not ish, it is ish. Ish, some might say ayash, but it's because they really don't really understand the Hebrew, right? As they might claim to, but ish, we have ish right here, male, right? In contrast to isha, woman, right? So here, 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 it says, let every man, ish, borrow right but the more correct word is the h7592 it is sha'al sha'al sha'el sha'al 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 sha'el sha'al sha'el that means to properly to ask or to inquire right to ask to inquire now you see it also has the word borrow and beg there now the word beg in the sense of ask is a little more correct than the word borrow. They put borrow there because this is the BDB, right? The Browns drive his bricks because they're already familiar with what the King James has. You know what I mean? So they put that in there. If you notice that even those many times the word, the underlying word, the source code word of the translation doesn't agree with the translated term, very rarely in the you know concordances will they point out the flaws that's for us in our studies to see well that is not accurate as you can see we have the a my right? the one a is the kal the kal which is the basic word the basic hebrew word is the kal right to ask to ask for sha'al sha'el 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 sha'al sha'al to ask for to ask as a favor right this is the main sense now they put the word borrow there but we're going to show you in the hebrew that there's another term that more properly speaking is borrow there's actually two other terms right for what we might call today borrowing and none of these terms are sha'al and it's only here in the scripture right that we find it translated as such there's probably elsewhere too but this is a major place because when we read this in the when the king of kings bible Right? The book of the seven seals, he would turn to us a pure language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So in the Negus and Neges, the Ethiopia Bible, we found the word also as ask. Right? And then we cross-referenced and checked in the Hebrew, the Masoretic, and the word is ask as well. To ask, right? to inquire. Also, Sha'al is used throughout to inquire, to consult. Right? to consult a deity, a god, to consult of an oracle, but it also has a term of to seek. Right? The Nephile sense of the verb is to ask for oneself, to ask leave or absence. But you can see it's not to, it's not to borrow, right? leave or absence, no, to ask, you know, may I leave, right? Here, to inquire, to inquire carefully. Now you see in the PL sense it says to beg, to practice beggary. Well, you know, asking and begging, you know, when somebody's asking somebody something, they say, and they're asking too much. What's often if somebody's asking too much, we'll say, okay, stop begging, right? So we can understand how this is, how this goes, the spirit of the word, not just the letter, but the spirit. The hefal of Sha'al, the H7592, that's mistranslated, severely mistranslated, because the whole context is off, right? Borrow implies you're going to pay it back right that means that if we follow that which is the mistranslation 
we get a miscontextualization and then we can imagine errors and this is where a lot of folks that come at the Bible for all these errors or contradictions it's usually because there are contradiction and errors right major ones in the translation right that he felt here to be given on request Sha'al to grant to make over to let one ask successfully or give or lend on request yes right grant or make over to right but the word in its basic sense here we're at Strong's definition from the Strong's concordance a primitive root the Sha'al to inquire by implication to request by extension you see the extension of that word Sha'al to demand demand to ask like ask counsel ask on something to beg yeah they put the word borrow but that's because when you study the 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 concordance and you learn how to read the concordance everything that's after this right there those watching the video can see this clearly you can see it has a colon a space and a hyphen everything that comes after the colon and the hyphen when you're looking at the Strong's definition is how this word this primitive or the main Hebrew word how it appears how it appears emphasis on appearance Right? We're not judging by appearance, right? We don't judge by appearance, but judge by content, right? The content of the word is clearly to ask, right? To ask, to inquire of. You got such and such? Yes, give me that. You know, give me this. You got such and such? Can you give me this? Thank you. That's to ask. That's what was commanded here. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man ask. All right, we just went through the whole Sha'al, the 87592. Let him ask of his neighbor, of his neighbor. Like so every mind, ask the next mind, the Mitzri, you know, the Kamitiu, the Kamiti, you know, the Kemite, or the Gitsi, Gitsawi, the, the, you know, ask of the Egyptian neighbors every woman of her neighbor what to ask of them now it specifies what to ask jewels of silver of kesef and jewels of zahab zahab in the Hebrew zahab is gold just to bring that up zahab you see it there and silver is kesef kesef and the word for jewels is kali 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 actually means like a thing an article Kali, Kali, you know, a thing like a thing made of this, a thing made of that, you know, an implement, an article, an object, a vessel, uh, a utensil, you know, so let every man, right, because people say, well, why were they doing that? Why were they even asking? You heard of back pay? <laughs> mm hmm. You see when they garnish, you know, when they, what happens when they garnish your wages, right? You know, you know what happens when like, you know, when the government, um, how do they call this again? Where, you know, they take the proceeds from something, you know what I mean? They take the proceeds, forget that word, you know, one of the words, some of you are probably are shouting out the word right now, give thanks brothers and sisters. But, you know, when they, you know, seize, you know, seize, Israel's, Israel's assets were seized. After the expulsion of the Hiksos or the Hekshaus, right? Who, Semitically speaking, one can say that they were related, in a sense, to the Hebrews and the Bnei Yisrael, the Bnei Yaakov, but they were not the Bnei Yaakov. They were not the sons of Jacob. They were not the children of Israel, right? They were not those Hebrews, you know, the people of the Bnei Yisrael. They were other Semitic Semites, you know, we already talked about that and went into a little bit of the proof, you know, the evidence that the Hyksos, you know, that were um, expulsed, right, or kicked out of Mitzrayim, right, this is where we come to the beginning of the second book of Moshe, known as Shemot, the names in Hebrew, and called Exodus. But here, here, here in Exodus, so look what it has over here. It says in Exodus 12, 35, and the Bnei Yisrael did according to the word of Moshe, and they borrowed. This is the translator again. It's the same H7592, Sha'al, same word that means to ask, to inquire, right? And 
beg more correctly than borrow. Now, how do we prove this right here? Well, let's prove this right here by scrolling down right here, right? Now, notice, even when the judgments and ordinances for Yisrael were being revealed after the ten words, right? When they came into the first covenant, because they had broke the covenant with the Egel Masekha, right, with the molten calf, and the covenant had to be renewed. So even in the old covenant, the Old Testament, right, in Exodus, we see them entering into the covenant, right, it being ratified, confirmed, and then they break in the covenant, and then it had to be renewed. That's when Moshe had to go back up for another 40 days, when Moses was the advocate, right, he was like the attorney, right, for the disobedient B'nai Yisrael. But here in Exodus 22 and 14, and if a man borrow of his neighbor, right, this right here is Sha'al, if he ask of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. The owner of it being not with it. So here you can clearly see it's also an ask situation here. But let's go down here to Debarim, Deuteronomy 15 and 6. And Yahuwah Eloheka, Jehovah Yahweh, hey, thy Elohim, blesseth thee. When he blesseth thee, Barak thee, right? When he increaseth, they don't usually have the right word right here. Go check out our blessing, right? In English, it is bloodshed video, that vlog there. We got into a little bit more right here. The true meaning of the word Barak. Right? When Yahuwah Eloheka, when he barak thee, when he increased thee, he prospers thee as he has promised thee, and thou shalt lend, you see the word lend, right, to many nations, right? We have the word abat, abat, really it's ayn, right? Abat, right? Abat, right? So abat, right? Right? So take a pledge, give a pledge, for what? For a debt, right? See, borrowing implies a debt. Asking, what well, it says, ask, right, and you shall receive, right, right, seek, and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. Ask, and you shall receive. If one doesn't have to receive, if, if I ask somebody something they don't have, what are they going to tell me? Hey, I, I, I'll give it to you, but I don't have it. If I had it, I'll give it to you. Okay, so I have to ask someone else, right? Now, if I borrow, Right? This is taking a pledge, right? And because I'm borrowing, it implies a debt, right? So note this right here, this word right here, this key word right here, right? In the abat, the abat, right? Not abat. Right? We have abat, we have ab, abat, which is father, but here we have abat, abat, it's an ayn, abat, right? Abat, right? A primitive root here from Strong's definition. Strong's bring out the sense of pawn. Causatively, in a causative sense, is to lend. And notice what it says, lend on what? Security. Lend on security. That means there's a pledge involved. It's just like right now, if you go to the bank or you go to Loan Shark or anyone else and you say, hey, loan me this, what's the first thing that, that the lender usually would demand? The lender would usually demand some sort of collateral. Right? In order to know that whatever money they lend, there will be some guarantee of receiving that money back, plus whatever interest or whatever else it might be a part of that, or what they can collect for that debt that is not paid at the time that it is to be paid based on this arrangement. So lending right, goes along with borrowing. Asking goes along with receiving. Right? Asking, receiving, right? Either receive an answer that yes, I have this and hey, I'll give this, or no, I don't have this, I don't I'm not gonna give it. Figuratively, right, this word abat is to entangle. And you can see that is used in the KJV firstly and foremostly to borrow. Even the words when you look up in the dictionaries or whatnot, the order of the words is very significant as well. To borrow to break, break ranks, to fetch, fetch a pledge, to lend, right? And it has a sense of surely, like a surety, right? So you can see where it says, and thou shall lend to many nations, right? Lend to many goy. A goy is a nation. Yisrael is a goy, a kadosh goy, a holy people. The other nations are goyim. 
whether black or white or what have you. They are not, if they're not of the nation of Israel, then they're the goyim, they're just nations, other nations, other people's nations. And thou shalt lend to many goyim, to many nations, but thou shalt not, what is it? Thou shalt not abat. It's the same word, abat. Abat. So this word is the same word for lending and borrowing. So the same word governs, right, the causative Right? In the reciprocal sense. The causative sense of abat is to lend. Lend on a pledge. Therefore, there's a debt and there's security attached to it or collateral attached to it. But he says to us that we shall lend to other nations. Right? When Yahuwah Eloheka, Yahuwah Eloheinu, when he baraks, you know, Yibarkeinu, he blesses, increases, prospers I and I as he has promised, given his yea and his amen, giving us good credit, his good amen on that we should do what? We shall abat to many goyim, to many other nations, lend to other nations. That means other nations, we will have the debt on other nations. But thou, I and I, shall not borrow, we shall not abat. We should not borrow from many nations, right? We should not borrow from them. That means that now they make us alone and now we are indebted. We should not come into debt. That's, that's the point of HaTorah here. And thou shall reign over many goyi, many other nations, but they shall not reign over thee. This is when we know we're in the covenant and we're in good standing in the covenant. This is what we work for, right? What we work for, walking out ha Torah, right? Studying to learn, learning to do. For Yahweh, for he who be who he be, Eloheinu will bless Sinai. He has promised his yea and his amen, right? Is yea, yea, right? Is amen, amen. That then we will lend abat abat to many nations right lend is part of a procedure you know is 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 part of a procedure there's a process to it lending lending and asking is not the same thing and here's the next thing some people may think that lending and asking is the same thing and that might be one reason why ask them how many people do they lend to and do they do business with that means you don't understand basic business terms, right? Lending, right? Lending, you can ask for a loan. But if you ask for a loan, like, this is how people are slick. People say, well, you could ask for a loan. Okay, you could ask for a loan. But if you ask for a loan, right, you have come into the lending-borrowing relationship or the abat relationship. It's no longer sha'al. You sha'al for a for a debt you know you know basically for a loan slash debt you know conditional but here it says yahuwah jehovah shall open to thee to i and i his good treasure right the shamayim right to give rain to thy land in his season and to bless all to prosper all the work of thine hand all the work of our hand to increase to prosper to cause good success right and thou shall lend to many nations now notice here in the barim deuteronomy 28 and 12 right this is the part of deuteronomy chapter 28 this is part of the blessing the burkot for obedience as, as we get to verse like 15 16 to verse 68 is the consequence for disobedience so we can know ourselves based on the disobedience right and we can look at every other people on the face of this earthly plane and see that each and every one of those applies to us and our people especially over this 400 plus years so here it says thou shall lend to many nations and thou shall not borrow but here's a different word here it uses the word lava really in the and the proper pointing is lawa, lawa. What is lawa? Lawa is at the root of Levi. And we say the word Levi, like the tribe of Levi, like the Levites, Lewim, Lewi, right? Lewi, right, which is Levi, comes from lawa, lawa. Martin Jews and the Martin pointing according to their um, 
Eastern European mother tongue, they, they enunciate the double V, double V. Double V is like double V, that's W, right? So in other words, in German, if you ever study German, right, the W has the V sound, right? And I think the, the V has the W sound. It's, 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 it's reversed like that. Right? This is where a lot of people get confused when they talk about Yiddish and, and it's not Hebrew. No, many of the European Jews, they do speak Hebrew, but they speak Hebrew with their mother tongue, right? The mother tongue. They have their mother tongue. That's what it's called, like mother tongue, in, uh, according to the linguistics of it, right? We speak from our Afro Semitic mother tongue, therefore, we enunciate it as the ancient Hebrews who are Afro-Semitic people enunciated as Lawa, Lawa. Lawa, the root of Lewi, right, means to join, to be joined. The Kaal has to join, be joined, to attend. The Nephil is to join oneself to or to be joined to. But now notice the second entry is to borrow and lend. So we have two words, the Abat, we have Abat, which has to do with making a pledge based on a pledge, right? Like collateral and debt and surety. And now here we have lawa, which both has the borrow sense and the lend sense. The borrow sense and the lend sense. To borrow, to lawa, right? The he fell to cause to borrow, right? To cause to borrow, right? To, to cause somebody, to, basically, if somebody asks for like a loan, and I cause them to borrow because they have asked for a loan, right? They have asked for something in a legal term that's called a, a borrow, lend, lend, lease, lend, borrow, that kind of cause to borrow, lend to, right? Cause to borrow, lend to. Strong's here says this, properly, lawa means to twine. Lawa, ancient pointing, lava. Martin point that is by implication to unite to remain also to borrow as a form of obligation so it's an obligation so when the children of Israel when the woman and the man and the woman were spoken to by Moshe right to ask right there was no form of obligation upon the ask there was no form of obligation. Even the Mitzrayim, they understood it because they understood what was going on. Many of us had to study deeply to really recognize what was going on in the context of the time and how the Torah and the keys in the Torah helps to verify the evidence, right? the archaeological evidence that we can find as well. Now, recognize this, that nobody, none of those ancient great, those great big mighty nations that were in existence before Yisrael became a nation like the Egyptians and like the Babylonians and Assyrians or any of those ancient nations, they never spoke about their defeats. They never memorialized their defeats. So when people say, well, if the Exodus happened, how come the Egyptians don't talk about Because the Egyptians were proud, boastful people and they never spoke about their defeats. There's examples where the, they, didn't, they didn't win battles, but they presented to the people in their wall paintings and monuments as though they won it. One of them was the Battle of Kadesh with the Hittites. That's a, a key in the classic examples. Same thing with the Assyrians. The ancient great nations that were big, mighty nations before, all of them were before, with the youths. Right? We're the younger generation, Yisrael, all these old heads, all these mighty elder ancient nations right? that were proud about what they could be proud about. They never, ever show me when Egypt wrote about its defeats. Even with the whole Hyksos, Hekshaus debacle and everything like that. Notice how much history is just, the Egyptians didn't even talk about it. They just removed it. There's large gaps in Egyptian chronology. And to really line it up with the biblical narrative, there's anything from 500 to 700 year gap. And the way that ancient Egyptian chronology has been presented, right, is very dubious. And there's so many things that have not even been translated yet. We was watching a documentary about correspondence between ancient Egypt and the Assyrians and the Hittites on the cuneiform tablets and everything. And they said they have over like 90 something percent 
that haven't even been looked at by someone who has any expertise, much less translated. So imagine how much other things, imagine how many things they found out that they cannot show us because if they do show us, we'll say, oh, those were Israelites in Egypt? They look like black people. See, it goes against the status quo of what's going on in this latter day and time. But here on the word borrow, right? Borrow is a form of obligation. In the causative sense, right? The causative sense is the lender part. So I'm the one who lends and by me lending to somebody, my is cause now of borrowing on their behalf and therefore on their behalf there is a form of obligation to return what I have lended to them. This is not the case that we find with the children of Yisrael. And we just prove this right here by right, going beyond the web page right, of the KJV. When you're reading the KJV, it's like looking at web page. When you get into the Hebrew, the Strong's Concordance, and you start to look at the Masoretic Hebrew of the Old Testament, the Koine Greek of the New Testament, this is when you really are getting to the source code. Right? This is when you can say you're getting to the source code. Right? And when you get to the source code, you really don't need resources. Call the only resource you need is that faculty of reasoning and that faculty of objectivity. Right? And that faculty right, that's seeking for the truth. What's the truth in the evidence that we find here? What's the truth in the evidence that we find here is that the B'nai Yisrael, the sons and the daughters, really the first one to be spoken to was the daughters. Right? But every woman shall borrow. No. Every woman shall ask. Shall ask of her neighbor. Let's bring up the Hebrew right here, here, here. Every woman shall ask. Let's go down here. Shall ask. Right here, with Shailah, with Shailah, Isha, Misha, Ken, Tah, Mishken, Tah, me from Shekenta, 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 from Ha, right, from her neighbor, with Shailah, with Shailah, with Shailah, or modern Hebrew, with Shailah. Vishala, Vishala, Vishala Isha, Misha Khenata, Mishkenta, Mishkenta. That's the first part right there, just to show one more part up to the common, the first part of the verse. And she to ask woman from her neighbor. That's literally how the Hebrew reads. We Sha'ila Isha Misha Kenataha. Right? And she shall ask, with Sha'ilah, 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 she will ask Isha, Isha, a woman, a wife, a woman, Isha, me from Shekenta, Shekenta, right? Those who she dwell with, just to bring the Shakain. Shakain is like an inhabitant, Shakain, Shakain, Shakain is a neighbor. My resident, a resident by extension, a fellow citizen or inhabitant, a neighbor or one who dwells with you. Shakan means to settle down, abide, to dwell, to tabernacle. Those who we, those Mitzri, Mitzrayim, who we dwelt amongst. Right? And of her that sojourneth in her house. And of her that sojourneth in her house. What should you, we ask? Kalei Kesef, jewels of silver, Kesef, and Kalei, jewels of Zahab, and raiment. And ye and y'all, the woman here being pointed to, right, shall put them up on your sons and up on upon your daughters. And ye and y'all shall spoil the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians. Right now, Natsal. What does Natsal mean? Natsal is an interesting word because there's some cases that this word is used to deliver, like shall deliver, right? You know, he shall deliver, right? Natsal, deliver. But the word itself means to snatch. BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs, definition brings out snatch away. Shall deliver, shall rescue, shall save, shall strip, 
shall plunder. Right? The nephi of the of the verb natsal uh, is to tear oneself away, deliver oneself, be torn away, torn out. Right? Deliver. Right? To strip off, to spoil, to deliver. Right? To take away, to snatch away. Right? To rescue, to deliver from enemies or troubles or death. So sometimes the active verb you might see in the Bible someplace like a psalm where it says, and he will deliver, and he'll deliver you, he'll deliver, he has delivered I. This is the word here, not out, not out, snatched, right? To deliver from sin, from guilt, the whole file, to pluck out, to be plucked out. The hita pa'el sense, like the reflexive sense, is like to strip oneself. So if you're doing the act of not out to yourself, that's almost like, it could be like to strip oneself in that sense, right? But getting down here to the Strong's, as we can see, the primitive root is to snatch away. Whether it's in a good or a bad sense. So when it says the spoil, so they spoiled by right, the Egyptians. So they snatched, right? They snatched away, right? You could say from the Egyptians. But you can see how the word elsewhere is translated as defend, deliver, escape, right? Pluck, preserve, recover. Recover is a good word right there when you know what happened right after the time of Yosef. And by the time we get to the time of, of the second book of Moshe called Exodus. Recover, rescue, rid, save, spoil, right? Strip, surely, take, right? So they basically took what was already theirs, right? The Israelites, the Hebrews, they took what was theirs. Because basically, we was getting blamed, or it's what they call it, the guilt by association. It's that guilt, in other words, the Rahab, 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 right? It says, make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. If you know he who be who he be, you know who Rahab is. Rahab is a name for Egypt that means boaster. Right, you know, boast up because they made the Hebrews victims by association because they saw us associated with the Hyksos, right, with Esau and his and his mixed multitude, right? Esau and his mixed, I say mixed multitude because Esau he had Canaanite wives and Esau had kings and rulers and had governmental administration. How would Esau have governmental administration before his twin brother, Yaiko? Because he already had that experience, even Mimitzrayi, even from Egypt. This is why in the beginning of Exodus it says that, oh, should there be like a war fall out, like a so war of some sort fall out, they were worried that the Bnei Yisrael, right, that we would join to Egypt's enemies. And the enemies at that time, as we begin the second book of Moshe, was the Hiksaus. And of the Hikshaus, the head of the Hikshaus, the leader of the Hikshaus, is our brother and was our brother Esau. Esau, right, was Esau, right? It's interesting how the prophecy would break down. That even though there were other peoples, the head, even of the wicked, the ratchet people, was our brother. Esau, he would be the head, right, as Yisrael, to be the head of the righteous. So, this is the truth of the matter, right? They ask, as we have Robeno Yeshua HaMoshia, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black lord and savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaNotri, right? He says, ask, right? And ye shall what, receive. Knock, uh, seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. A-S-K, ask, seek, knock, ask, right? Right? And it shall be given, and you shall receive, seek, and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. So they ask, right? Not borrow. You have to think about it for a moment, because this might be new knowledge to some, for some might be old knowledge, right? But one thing is clear is that the King James Version did not accurately translate that and caused a lot of faux debates and 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 imagined contradictions and imagined um, inconsistencies in the narrative. Okay, here's some extras right here. Hebrew inscriptions found in Arabia. All right. 
you know, did the Torah. I come from Arabia. I the Sinai in Arabia. I persecution of uh, the Shemitics, the Afro Asiatics. You know what I mean? King Tut sandals. You see where they have Nubian and he has a Nubian, the Hebrews and the Nubians. All right, were the Nubians enemies. To the ancient uh, Kemetiu, the ancient native Egyptians, the Nubians or the Kushites, especially those in Lower Kush, they were regarded as their enemies too. How interesting it is, all right, when we look at the facts of the matter. All right, so it's not just us as Hebrews, all right, just how the ancient Egyptians thought of themselves as a peculiar, you know, in their own eyes and right people, all right? So here, 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 when we're talking about the Hyksos, right, Hekshaus, right, when we're talking about the Hebrews, we see some very interesting correspondence. If you notice that, we know that the Egyptians wore false beards. We know that some Africans or some black people don't grow full beards, which is interesting. So we can also tell who's who, you know, by certain other characteristics as well. Right? One thing about the Hebrews that we see clearly even in ancient Egypt is that they didn't have to resort to the fake beards. They had a full beard. Right? They had a full beard, also mustache. Also, you'll notice their locks. Right? There's some peculiar, you know, very peculiar features. Right? When we look at different periods in ancient Egypt. Right? And we'll see at certain points in ancient Egypt there's unique um, people groups, right? And, but then we can always see the native Egyptian groups throughout, right? Who are the native Egyptian? Because the Egyptians refer to themselves as the native Egyptians. So what we get in Exodus is like nationalism. So what the Hebrews were facing in Egypt, it was a lot of nationalism that was going on at that particular time as well, right? And from a certain point of view, you know, we don't blame them. Right? But they blamed us. Right? You know, they didn't know Esau like we knew Esau. But how they saw us, they said, well, these are both um, Semitics, Asiatics. These, these are both Asiatic peoples, Semitic peoples. Right? Even though, right, that's why it says that they did not know Joseph. See, if they had recognized Joseph, Yosef, Yawasaf, right, would have recognized that we were a distinct people that our involvement in Egypt, right, we came in peaceably, right, into Egypt. We came into Egypt under good circumstances. We even, to a great degree, we also sought to be a benefit, right, to Egypt as our brother Yosef. We've been hearing ones blaming Joseph for this or that, so forth and so on. But when are the commit to you, the Chemites, going to stop boasting? Right and recognize that they're no special. The Egyptians were no more special than it. we know the Israelites. We were only special because we took on ourselves the yoke of Torah. Right, we were willing to receive Ha Torah. This is what made us unique. Even though we were the last of all people, right? They said the first shall be last and the last first. Ancient Egypt, ancient Assyria, all these ancient Babylon, all these were big nations going on. We're like the little new kids on the block, you know, the, the, you know, like the Utes. We're like the Utes in this whole picture, right? You know, the Haberu are now attempting to take Jerusalem. So the testimony is all there. We look at the Amarna letters, right? The Amarna letters are very, very telling, right? The Amarna letters are very, very telling on who's who, right? So we have these terms, uh, Habiru. We have the Hyksos term. Who's who? Who are we really speaking about here? Going to get into a little more of this detail here, brothers and sisters, you know, as we move forward, onward and upward, right? But just to seal up right here, here, here. And every woman shall ask, shall ask, and every woman shall ask, yes? And every man shall ask, every woman shall ask, right, of her neighbor, Right? Every mind shall ask. Ask, not borrow. Ask, not borrow. Shall ask. Right? Shall ask. Right? Of their neighbor. Not borrow. So the KJV right there, there, there. 
There's a mistranslations right there, and I hope that this is helpful for ones and ones to, you know, see that the Bible does not contradict itself, right? The true scripts, when we get to the source, right? The source code, right? We get out of the translation, getting lost in the mistranslation, right? As we mentioned, the KJV Bible is very, you know, it's a very useful, right, point of reference, but there are key areas where its translation leaves a lot to be desired, is highly inaccurate, and a lot of um, useless debates, you know, and controversies could have been avoided, you know, just by going to the source code, right? And we're not just saying here as we're speaking about, you know, the Bible, but also with some allegations that have been mentioned and leveled against the Bible, where they say, well, this or that was copyright, you know, was it copyright? <laughs> no, it was plagiarized. You know, we've, we've hear this over and over again. Like, first of all, we have negative commands in Torah, and we have positive commands in Torah. We have negative confessions in the Torah and the scriptures, and we have positive confessions. Right? And both of those go beyond the so-called 42. A commandment is not a confession. A confession is not a command. Try again. How about when they say, well, even Proverbs was taken from, you know, um, the Patahotep, the Maxims of Kagami, or so forth and so on. Well, let's look at the original text, right? And we're up for that. We're up for looking at the original text, even if it's in the hieroglyphics, if it's in the demotic or hieratic. You know, let's look at the original text and let's compare text for text, you know, because too many things were deep ending. Right, on other people's translations. Right? We as Hebrews, yes, we have done that as well based on all these European, Jewish, other Jews, Christian translations. But we have to, you know, we have to fact check these things for ourselves. Same thing with Eucomatics and y'all who are into, you know, Kemet, you know, and Egypt and Egyptology. A lot of y'all have been relying on other people's translations. Right, And sometimes some of their translations leave a lot to be desired. We have to look at the source code. Right, So the children of Israel, they were told to ask. Right? You know? And we give thanks for the giving right, of the Mitzrayim. Right? Ask, right? and it shall be given, you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Right? Yes, sir. Rastafari. So here, 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 brothers and sisters, this is Ras Ayadonis the far. This is Yadin here, Yadin Ben Chayil, L-O-J, the line of Judah Society, L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. Check us out here, Rastafari Jews, also Rastafari Israelites. Also, stay tuned, stay tuned, Rastafari TV.